Hey, Schmoville, you know, Father's Day is right around the corner, and dads love two things above all else. They love meat, and they love value. We got them both with this new deal from Omaha Steaks. Omaha Steaks, we're huge fans of it on Schmoes. You hear us talk about it all the time. Usually Christian steals the product before I get a chance to get my grubby hands on it. We have a grill right here at the studio. We use it constantly thanks to Omaha Steaks. Convenience. Omaha Steaks, they deliver hand-trimmed, vacuum-sealed, flash-frozen meats directly to your door in an Omaha Steaks cooler. You can get your pork poultry, veal, lamb, bison, seafood, veggies, and, of course, like we always talk about, steaks. It's the highest quality of cuts with one-of-a-kind flavor. All the beef is USDA inspected for quality and aged for 21 days to unlock the full flavor and tenderness of the cuts. Mmm, makes my mouth water just thinking about it. Omaha Steaks even gives you the option to customize cuts for your dad's grilling needs, find out recipes, even get wine pairings. Get on board with this right now. Omaha Steaks is giving a limited time offer to our Schmozno listeners for Father's Day. It's 78% off. This is really an amazing deal. Go to omahasteaks.com Type in schmoes in the search bar, and you can get this for your Omaha Steak package. Listen to this for Father's Day. You get two tender filet mignons, two beefy top sirloins, four chicken fried steaks, two boneless pork chops, four all-beef Omaha Steak burgers, four gourmet jumbo franks, 12 ounces of all-beef meatballs, a pound of steak fa- steakhouse fries, four caramel apple tart. <laughs> Listen to all this. I'm still going. One Omaha Steak seasoning packet. Plus, you get four more grill-ready Omaha Steaks burgers free with your purchase. Again, it's a limited time package. It's only $49.99. Again, that is 78% off. 78% off $49.99 when you go to omahasteaks.com. Type schmoes in the search bar and add the Father's Day package to your cart. Do not wait. This offer ends soon. Go to omahasteaks.com. Type schmoes in the search bar. Grab your dad and fire up the grill. Don't literally grab your dad unless, you know, he's cool with that. Y'all dealing with the king. If you want to come and get it, let the outlaw get you out your seats. You want sports talk politics? He don't give a shit. Everyone can say speak. Follow it. About to issue y'all a master class. You want to pass? Come slinging the new podcast. See candy ass. Grab a toss, bitch. Get information. It's your boy, John Roker. Welcome to the Outlaw Nation. This show, this is a very special Outlaw Nation. Um, you know, it's been a few weeks since I've done the show um so i decided to come back with it uh and matt nost was kind enough to come on we're talking the nba finals and this is recorded in two parts so what you'll hear is um the first part will be uh what matt and i recorded right after game one we met up and we're talking about it and we talked about what we thought what we thought would happen with the jr smith blunder everything like that and then we just recorded a the second part of it last night after Game 3 had finished uh, the next morning, which, which was, of course, yesterday, we uh, decided to meet up and talk about it uh, uh, at the studio. So we did that. That's so, so Outlaw Nation is broken up into two parts today, um, and I will try to intro the second part where it belongs, and then we'll go from there. So, all right, let's, uh, let's get it going, and, and obviously you'll hear me intro the episode as well. But I wanted to let you guys know that this was a, 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 a special kind of uh, Outlaw Nation episode. Okay, hope you guys have been well, and... I hope you enjoy the show. We're talking the NBA Finals pretty much. I don't know if we go into too many tangents, but it's pretty much the NBA Finals. So if you just want to hear our voices talking, this is the show, um, and uh, that'll be that. All right, let's get it going. Welcome, everybody, to a new episode of Outlaw Nation. I know it's been a while. Uh, I apologize it's taken so long to get to do this, but like, it's just, there's so much going on. You guys know my life. You guys know all the podcasts I'm doing, all the stuff I've been doing here at Collider and all the stuff with the Schmodown. And also, I've been booking a lot of voiceover work lately, which has taken a lot of my time as well. So, uh, unfortunately, I haven't been able to swing back around Outlaw Nation for a few weeks. But I thought I would do it uh, now because uh, Matt and I, a lot of people, you guys have been asking for a kind of finals preview, finals review or something like that of... Uh, the NBA Finals with uh, uh, the Cleveland Cavaliers and the Golden State Warriors going at it. Now, the the show isn't going to be 100% only just the NBA stuff, but we're going to start there, uh, and I'm welcoming uh, Matt Nost to the show. Welcome, Matt, back again. 
Uh, it's good to be back in the nation amongst the people. How are we? <laughs> What's the people here in Rokinopolis? Uh, you can see, look out and see the plethora of masks around you. Yeah. And do you guys do like uh, harvest festivals and stuff like that? Is it like a full cultural? Well, we're, we're getting there. I think we've got someone in charge of organizing those oh. things. Yeah. Who, who do you have in charge? Those. Well, I can't reveal at this point. See, this, this was uh, what, what I brought what, up on the show the other day. What, which show do you mean? When you said, hey, you didn't know, we were talking about the off-air discussion as to whether oh. or not I'm part of, this is the, there's a direction involved in Outlaw Nation, but I don't understand the machinations behind that direction. Right. So it's hard to know, like, is this a Gestapo thing? Like, there's, how are no, no, you? No, 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 there's no Gestapo thing. How are you I'm getting? I'm a benevolent dictator. See, there's no such thing. Well, that's, I want to like break Jumbo the rule. shrimp, man. Oxymorons exist for a reason. Listen, I like to break convention. You know that. And this is, uh, this is. By being I, a benevolent even dictator. Exactly. Uh, I, uh, what I say goes in the outlaw nation, but I'm very open to other people's points of views and I'm having, very open to saying no to people. Well, but also saying yes. So there's a, there's always both sides to the well, situation. Okay. Then, then why, why as a benevolent dictator, can you not answer who's in charge of say organizing a fall festival? Well, because that person doesn't want to be known. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. They want to exist in a position of anonymity. Yes. Okay. They want to be able to organize this stuff because they don't want any kind of blowback on them if they get it wrong. And I respect that. Also, oh, you're saying the stakes from the nation are so high, they demand a certain level of product. The, that this person would fear the repercussions of not being able to meet exactly. that expectation. Exactly. And, and she's a very sensitive person. And I don't want to subject her to any kind of criticism or yeah. him. I yeah. don't want to say who it is. I, I think we now know it's a she. Okay. It's fine. I don't know why you're trying I, to pin me down on my own show. It's not. I'm just trying to understand the construct of of having a nation. Yes. The bureaucratic setup that you have to, and like how much is formal and how much is informal. What's well, your tax situation like? The tax situation is really favorable. But I mean, okay. So you are then to your me. own sovereignty. Yeah. So you don't have to pay. You don't have to kick back up. But I don't have to. There's no because I'm the way. I'm who you kick back up to. The buck stops with you. Is exactly. You exactly. But I don't take taxes from the people in Outlaw Nation. I have my own money. I can fund my own life. Oh, so you're just sustaining this entire nation yes. on your own dime? Well, not on my own dime necessarily. The people, the people put in what they want to put in for everyone to be uh, happy and satisfied in Outlaw Nation. Outlaw Nation is not about <laughs> stepping on other people to survive. Yeah, they're making the choice to give me everything they have, and I can't <laughs> wait, stop wait, them wait, from wait, that. Wait a second, you're painting it so wrong. I'm just saying, dictator implies very specific stuff. Well, sure, but because you've had some bad examples in the past. That I'm trying to break the okay, convention. Okay, find me a good example of a dictator. You're looking at it. You're looking at it. Now. I want to break the convention to be the good dictator <laughs> in that law nation. So you're saying instead of you being the Sandinista cell that infiltrates the U.S., the CIA should have used you to infiltrate the South America yeah. and the Banana Republics, and you would have been you know, basically leading them to prosperity low these many years well, later. Well, first of all, we don't have bananas in South America, so I don't know where that comes from. Well, that's where the term comes from. Right. I, it comes from, yeah. Does it come from the Central American nations, not necessarily the, the South American nations? Because we have plantains down in South America, dog. I I think you're splitting hairs on that. <laughs> I'm splitting banana peels. I think you might split. be right that it, maybe the term derives from this geographical location, yes. but it's applied to the entire, yeah. basically... And I find that offensive, because we have different... The you know, Southern Hemisphere. Yeah. Outlaw Nation is not a banana republic. It's a good no. store. No. That's a good store, though. I'm <laughs> saying, but you as a benevolent dictator... Yeah. Could have thrived had they put oh, you in place. Roles were reversed. Sure. Instead of, instead of yeah. the Sandinistas sending you up here to infiltrate us. I didn't. I don't know what you're talking about. We could have recruited your family to do the inverse. <laughs> is what I'm saying. Some of my family. A lot of my other family <laughs> wouldn't have gone with it. Wouldn't have gone with it. They'd uh, have taken a lot of the money and that it had problems. See, this them, game so. is fun uh, for you, whereas we flipped it. Part of my heritage is uh, German. Oh. That, that turns not fun real quick. I, yeah, no. That turns Let's not fun it. real quick. <laughs> <laughs> Whether it's World War II, one or two, it's no bueno. Have you heard about this Taika Waititi movie that's, that he's working on, Jojo Bunny? Oh, what, uh, uh, what is it? it yeah, well, I want to say yes. Yeah, it's a, he's, he's playing Hitler. In, he's yes. like the friend of this kid or imaginary friend of this kid. And it's he said today, because he started production yesterday, he said, like, I can't wait to finish this movie and... Yeah, make fun of some Nazis and piss a lot of racists off. It was a really powerful statement from a guy who was like really blown up on the scene now because of Thor Ragnarok to approach it this way. And I'm, I'm interested. It's interesting. Like I always wonder uh, people with German heritage or German people like, do, 
is it a, do you want to ignore it? Because it was just one dude and a bunch of people who like took care. Like, do you have any kind of connection to it? Zip, zilch. Okay. All right, cool. Uh, yeah. I am, I am German, English, Scottish, and uh, oh, Cherokee. So you've got a lot of going on. Yeah. Here. On my dad's side, though, I am German and Cherokee. Gotcha. So oh. those are th- thicker. My mom's is English and Scottish. Do you receive money from the government for being Cherokee? I technically could. Well, no, not receive money. I could have gotten a break in um, like college tuition. Oh, gotcha. Okay. I could have certain stuff like that. I'm yeah. one-eighth. Yeah, I had a friend who – well, not a friend, but I had a coworker of an old job who received money from the government every month because he was a quarter yeah, Native it's gotta American be, it's, or something like that. I, but my dad's a quarter. Yeah. Because um, apparently there's programs you can get money or whatever for, as restitution or whatever for what happened. Yeah, for us stealing. And yeah. I say us because I'm an American. I don't I – don't, <laughs> <laughs> really identify with <coughs> yeah. the Cherokee, the German, the English, the or Nation. the Scottish. None yeah. of it. No. I identify as I grew up here. My right. heritage is this country. And then I'm shit. I, I grew up around Italians for eight years in right. West Virginia, and to me that speaks more to home and childhood. Yeah. Than being Cherokee, German, right, Scottish, English. Yeah. So that no, kind of stuff. you I right. I have no tie to anything that happened, whether it be Hitler or Bismarck. I got nothing. <laughs> what a when Nowitzki hits shots, do you feel a certain level of pride? Just in that maybe that could be me as an old guy now, just foisting up against mid-20-year-olds? All right, fine. So you don't feel the pride that he's German-based? Nope. In Outside of age. You don't know him. Okay. <laughs> because we're, he's, uh, I think, only a couple of years older than me, and that's weird to say. Oh, yeah. I know. It's that strange. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm older than Nowitzki. That's weird for me, all, all kinds of levels. I'm older than LeBron. That's weird to me because LeBron looks like he's older than me. The weirdest to me was the first time I was older than a playmate my freshman year of high school. I mean, not high school, college. A playmate? A play, playboy playmate. Oh, wow. Really? Yeah. Like third or oh, fourth month in, somebody yeah. on the floor, a few somebody's on the floor had playboy subscriptions and uh, yeah. saw it, looked at her birth date, and I was like, oh my God, I'm older than a playmate. That's never happened to me. It seems so weird that... I'm now yeah. beyond that age. Yeah. Like it was still, there would still pop up and they would be, you know, older than me. Mm-hmm. But within the next like three years, those days are gone. Well, yeah. And dude, you know, we're talking about the finals. Like I remember LeBron being a rookie. It's insane that we're now. I watched him in high school. That's the thing. And I, on it, ESPN. We're making that turn, Matt, where he's going into the twilight of his career. Oh. We have lived long enough to see this. Um, I don't remember Jordan as vividly as a rookie, but I remember the third or fourth year with the Pistons stuff and the playoffs. Yeah. That's when I first got to know Jordan because I was more focused on the bullets the at Jordan the time. Jordan rules, like when that was all setting and they exactly. couldn't, get, couldn't get past the ceiling, the, the Pistons for a couple of years. Right. That's when I was watching. All, I was still, I was really young and watching yeah. a lot. Like, you know, at that point it was whatever games came on. Uh, was it NBC? Like on Saturdays? I remember watching like Probably. Boston and L.A. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's only few like nationally televised games, and I yeah. was watching all those, and then got into more and more and more. But yeah, my my real I guess life with Jordan started about the same time. Yeah, I was already a Bulls fan because I loved right. Jordan. Right. Um, yeah. Did you? That's a good question. Did you grow up a Bull? Like, did you? Was that your first game yeah. you ever watched? Well, my, was, no, I, was it Jordan or was it was it not before Jordan? Jordan was the first player that I ever loved, so I was a okay. Bulls fan from. When I started watching yeah, yeah, yeah. basketball. Okay. I'm still a Bulls fan. I'm not like a... F- right, you're fair weather. Yeah, I got a f- buddy that's a star fucker. And just like right now, the, the Pats have been his favorite team for 10 years. Oh. And LeBron, Cleveland is currently his favorite team, but it was Miami. <laughs> it's like, okay, man. Like I, You like excellence. Right. That's fine. The Yankees were your favorite team in the 90s, Ugh. the late 90s, early 2000s. Stay with us or don't don't bandwagon on that's or frustrating. At least he's true to himself. Yeah. He does that with every sport. Okay. He's consistent. Is what yeah, he's yeah, consistently yeah, yeah. a bandwagon fan. Gotcha. <laughs> God. Yeah. Although I'm surprised he didn't jump on Golden State, but no, he stayed loyal to LeBron. Well, look, I, I love LeBron and I follow him from team to team. My team is the Wizards. So like if the Wizards are playing LeBron's team, I'm cheering for the Wizards. Oh yeah. But like but I Support LeBron. So, yeah, I was a Heat fan. I was a Cavaliers fan in that way in that I want him to win. But I wasn't like buying uh, Cavaliers merchandise or Heat merchandise in that way. I'm more like cheering him on from the sidelines. Like I want him to succeed because I think he's – yeah, you can make a case. I know we – I don't want to get too deep into this, but like you can make a – he's the second 
best basketball player to ever walk the planet. And if he was to I somehow know. pull this series out, you would have more of an argument that he could be the, the, you will, the best. Because th- this is the first year that I can really remember where he actually reminds me at times of Jordan. Yeah. This is the first year that I – like. because, look, outside of the, the, the two, three years of this eight-year run, yeah. that, that initial two, three – he was getting to the stage, but he would shrink from the stage. Mm-hmm. Like there was a, the games in San Antonio early on where like he's biting his nails and stuff like that. Yeah. You know, like he, he scores less than 10 points in a game. Yeah. It just was not LeBron and hadn't – like he's amazing in that from high school he was anointed and came into the league and actually lived up to the hype and he's never crumbled. He's never had a bad scandal. He's never mm-hmm. – he's succeeded in a way that we both – talked about in the past yeah. that I don't think Jordan ever could have in the social media age because I think yeah. eventually his assholishness would have come through oh, yeah. and would have killed him and now he's fighting a different fight whereas LeBron has, has risen through all that but when he got to the biggest stage it was the first time I ever saw him shrink from it and he did it a few times yeah. so it was like I don't know man Jordan's, we had been conditioned by Jordan Yes. so to see LeBron fall apart in these moments and choke or let the moment overwhelm him. We weren't used well, to that from a superstar. We saw he had, we saw him be human. Yeah. Which when Jordan finally was old enough to make those you know three and three uh, trips. Yeah. He was mature enough, I think, to handle the situation. And LeBron got more success early on, so right. it was tougher to manage, I guess. Yeah. And the expectations and the buildup of the anticipation. But man, this year he's had a few because he's finally got an outside shot that you have to respect. Yeah. Um, and, and the fadeaways, the Jordan fadeaway. The Jordan fadeaways, now. which yeah. is an old man move. Yep. You need to build this into this game, in your game if you want to have a long-term career. Exactly. You can't keep running and gunning or you can't keep driving to the rim once you cross that certain edge because your body just can't take it anymore. Yeah. And you risk injury. You risk injury more by doing that kind of stuff. Ask Derek Rhodes. Yeah, I know. A number of people who, you know, Iverson, same thing happened. When Iverson fell off the cliff, he fell off the cliff, man. He was incredible. And then it just all stopped working because he was too injured. Well, yeah, and his entire style and existence was predicated upon speed. Exactly. Quick twitch muscle fiber mm-hmm. and all that shit. Yeah. And once you lose that step, it's like a slot receiver. Yeah. You're out of the league. Yep. You can't, if you can't make that quick cut and then boom, and you can't just out hustle for these moments, then you're no longer good. It's like Tony Parker now. Yeah. Holding on, but you're nowhere near as effective as you used to be just because you're not as fast. Ginobili, too. They have their occasional game where they flare up and they're great, and you remember why you loved them, but it isn't consistent like it used to be before. See, I still think Ginobili should come back and play because he, he is value-added mm-hmm. to me more so than Tony Parker because I think Tony Parker is just slowly petering out. Yeah. It just It's nothing against He's him. He's a point guard. He's a point guard. Yeah. Whereas Ginobili always had a little bit old man game. Yeah. So now it's just a little bit more old man game and you play 12 minutes a night. Yeah. And that's, yeah. you know, maybe in the playoffs they need you more and you're paying 24 or something on a certain night. Right. But you're not starting. No. But you were saying LeBron, LeBron when he first, like, right, right. The, the Celtics had his number. Mm-hmm. Then the Spurs swept him out. And he had these, te- you know, these teammates that weren't going to take him to it, like Boogie uh, or Booby, whatever his yeah, name Booby. was. Yeah, and then, like, uh, who, who was the center, the bald-headed center? I always well, forget. Still name. Drunas El- Elgauskas. Elgauskas, yeah. And then he had uh, Anderson Verjao. Verjao, right. And uh, let's see, were there any other bigs? Those well, Shaq rolled in there for, one, yeah, for all season, but it was count. he was on fumes, man. Yeah. But, like, he's done – and that's the thing. He took a lot of hits. And that's the thing that I admire about LeBron. I actually became a fan of LeBron when, after the Miami decision because I was like – I know what it's like to make a mistake and have everybody be mad at you. Like, I get that and, like, judge you or want to, like, put you in, in just in, in jail, in mental jail. And so I kind of felt for the guy because he did a good thing. He just did a stupid thing at the same time because he, like, he raised 2 to $4 million for that Boys and Girls Youth Club when he did the announcement. Yeah, it was just ill-advised. It was ill-advised, or right. Or just tell Cleveland yeah, from the get-go, tell them. you have no shot. Right. I apologize to you, but... Your pitch was right. you know, not good enough. Right. And the fans would have been, I think, at least a little bit better. They wouldn't have been burning his jersey in the street. Right. Had they known beforehand, whereas you do that decision, and I'm going to take my talents 
to South Beach, just like that's a sound clip, man. Yeah, but who who of us hasn't been swagger or cocky in our twenties and made a mistake? And that's just what happens. And yeah, mm-hmm. you want him to be mature, but he was a kid in his twenties. He's gonna make these mistakes, yeah. And because he he was hungry to win, and sometimes you get hungry to win. You want something better. You're gonna drop something else to go get something better because you know that you have a shot at, get, at at achieving another level. And he saw that with Wade and with Bosch and Miami down there with Spolstra. He knew they could teach him how to win, and I think the I think him going to Miami, which may have, uh, which probably obviously pissed off a lot of Cleveland Cavaliers fans uh, when they burned stuff. When he came back, the reason they won a title, the reason they've been in the finals for the last few years, is because of what he learned in Miami, and that is important. And yeah, you can say, oh well, he's the one that that, that picks the team. He's the one that like gets the general manager to do kind of stuff. Uh, sure, maybe. But he still takes them to the finals, which yeah. I would love it if my Wizards would go to the finals eight years in a row and win a couple of them. I'd be quite happy with that. Well, you can't say you're Wizards because LeBron has done it for two different teams now. Right. Well, sure, 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 sure. Fine. That if he yeah, I'm just saying my eight years with one team least would be you know Bill Russell, Russell level. Right, the Celtics. Yeah, Although yeah. the fucking they played so many fewer games. In yeah. that era, it's yeah. not even funny. And they didn't have like multiple big seven feet people no. in the league to counter I th- Russell. Yeah, I, I what was there, twelve teams in the league? Yeah. Ten teams? Yeah, exactly. You played one round and then made the finals early on. Yeah. That's not really much of a – like when it's like uh, X number of years in a row and be like, well, some of those are discounted because there was only a, a single playoff series before the finals or – Yeah. I, I don't know how that counts. I believe that's how it was in the early – well, I think that's that's what sometimes is the um, – because I, I put a tweet out the other day. I was like, well, because Kobe – fucking Kobe. He came out and he said like, oh – Yeah, cherish LeBron for yeah, what he is. I was, just, I was so my mad five, at him. My five, he interjects himself into the, the conversation. Uh, Matt, I was so fucking mad. Man, it's I a was, false uh, humility. Yeah, it's, but it's a bullshit narrative about himself that I don't know if he 100% believes – and if he does, he's a fucking asshole. No, I think I'm glad he won the Oscar, but he's a fucking asshole. I think he's really gotten into this. He's selling a different narrative and story of himself. This yeah. is where he is actually better than Jordan. Because Kobe could never match him on the basketball nope. court. But what he can do is the post-career spin. Mm. The general populace as a whole has a much rosier picture of Kobe Bryant than when he was a player. Yes. We all look at him rather fondly and like, oh, Kobe. Whereas when he was in the league, he was universally hated yep. for his opening, I don't care how many seasons you want to call it, with the Lakers. Yeah. Every other team hated him. Yeah. Every other team's fans hated him. Right. He was cocky. He was a prick. Mm-hmm. He was, you know, he, he broke up a, a duo that could have won yeah. seven championships for Christ's sake. And then he sold the dude under the bus when he got accused of anal rape by that girl. He sold one half of that duo saying, yeah. hey, Shaq cheats on his wife all the time. Why yeah. do I get in trouble look, for doing it? What the fuck? And I'm not fuck? absolving Shaq of fucking that no, duo of either. But, but now we look at Kobe through these rose-colored lenses. Yeah, it's bullshit. It's amazing. The PR job, like through the last year of him and the, the fucking farewell tour yeah. and then the post-documentaries and now winning an Oscar, there's a love fest for Kobe Bryant. Yeah. And Jordan never did that, and he just became kind of a reclusive figure. Right, but but Jordan was beloved during his yes. playing days. He was trying to hold on to that yeah. by not altering that image as opposed to updating and growing with it. Yeah. And Kobe was like, I need to spin out of that and be more proactive. Exactly. And he's got a better you know, Q rating, I'd guess. On For a, lack of a better term. Yeah, yeah. it's a, like just a way people maybe feel like they know him better and right. have a closeness and he's more top of the mind aware. So that's probably not true. But. Kobe, that's what Kobe was unusual as a star. Like people love Larry Bird. Yeah, the people who played against him or the, the fan bases that would lose to Larry in the playoffs all the time in the Celtics probably hated Larry, but they respected him. Magic, people hated and respected at the same time. Uh, uh, the Pistons, everybody fucking hated. Uh, Isaiah Thomas and all that. And then you had Jordan. And Jordan, those those are the guys that were like, they got respect because you enjoyed watching them play. Even if you were a basketball aficionado, a pure lover of the game, mm-hmm. you loved those guys. Yeah. But Kobe was something else. Kobe came along and Kobe was 
out of that 90s selfish kind of place that a lot like people like uh, Iverson and Weber and all these people cleaning up cash, making their money, but mm-hmm. not necessarily delivering on the court consistently in the ways that Magic and Bird and and uh, uh, even Barkley, I would throw in that to a degree, and Jordan yeah, did. Yeah, but Barkley had a likability that those guys didn't. That's what I'm saying. Barkley had a likability there, and those guys, with those four guys, and then you go into this 90s stuff, and you have people like uh, Kobe come out of it, and you see that. Kobe was uh, a selfish guy. He was about himself. And then countering Kobe, you have Tim Duncan, a quiet warrior, no more, di- no more driven than Kobe, no more. You mean no less driven? No, I'm sorry, no less driven than Kobe, no less desirous to be a champion, no less willing to make sacrifices yeah. for his team. And there's Introduce the difference. the concept of taking less. Yes, and that's the difference. Kobe, Kobe wanted it to be all about himself. Duncan did yeah. not. But yet they were still both alphas. They were just alphas in different ways. And I love the way Duncan did it more than Kobe. And I'll always put Duncan above Kobe in the lexicon of greatest players. I will. Always. Well, whenever whenever I do that where I start trying to define who is better than what, yeah. I always think of it like, well, who would I want on my team the most? Yeah. What guy is so good and complimentary and undeniable in talent? And Kobe is all those things. I think if you can get Olympic Kobe – if that could be the full-time sure. version of Kobe, sure. then that, that guy I'd want on my team 100% of the time. Right. Um, but Olympic Kobe was always doing it with the younger guys than him. True. And they deferred right? to him in the big moments. Exactly. And he loved that and succeeded in those, yeah, he did. In those moments. He's, he's an alpha, and he's successful at being an alpha. I'm never going to deny that. Those two championships he won are his championships. Five yeah. are not his champions. No, the previous three, like he was. That's Shaq. Yeah, he was a passenger on that train. He exactly. might have been. He might have been co-conductor or something. But the train, then the other co- conductor was Phil Jackson, and Shaq was the train. Yeah, Shaq exactly. is the one doing. Yeah, the bulk of the work in this. Exactly. While the kid was learning how to win, Shaq was teaching him yeah. how to win. Shaq was and an Phil. unstoppable force. Yeah, and no one, no coach was writing a fucking takedown book about their star. Like, Casey Jones never did that with Larry Bird. Pat Riley never did that with Magic. Uh, never did that with LeBron. He never did that. Like, no coach. But Phil Jackson did that with Kobe. We talk about how uncoachable he was, how difficult he was to have as a player, all these kinds of things. So that, to me, keeps him down lower in, in the echelon of great players. So when you look at someone like LeBron, I think he's a harken back to the old school guys. But he's a more sensitive guy. He's a guy more aware of social issues, more wanting to talk about them. And I appreciate that. And so when he did the whole Miami decision thing, I kind of changed on LeBron and got to like see him from a different angle where I had hated him because he was knocking out my Wizards every fucking year in the playoffs. Yeah. Uh, and getting all the calls, which drove me insane. Um, <laughs> now he's not getting any. <laughs> I mean, he still is. That. But Okay, now I think that was... Okay. I think that was a block. All right, so we're going to talk about the – you talk about the game one. Game one. Okay, well, let's segue into the game one then. We might as well talk about yeah. it now. It's, it seems like organically, right? Okay, so yeah, the, it, it felt to me there were a lot of calls, and I don't usually go the ref's route. I really don't. Me either. Uh, but it really felt, especially coming out of Houston game seven game, into this game one, it really felt like the the ref's – had some kind of bent towards Golden State. <sighs> okay, well, Houston, I'm sorry. The refs are already letting sure. James Harden travel every time he takes a step sure, back. Sure, sure, so sure. So now you want them to get all the foul calls due? <laughs> I'm sorry. It, it pisses me off. I'm so glad Houston lost. The, oh, I, I'm, oh, I'm in the minority. Houston lost because of their stupid ass keep shooting threes when they should have been running a layup train. Lay, uh, they should have been running they a layup been, draw on the wall. Because Eric Gordon showed that he was pretty much unstoppable every yes. time he wanted to get to the I agree. Yes. I agree. But I also do not care for the way that they play. It's this ISO. I'm going to wait to the last eight seconds yes. and then just run in. And in, I'm James Harden, so I'm going to try and get a foul or a layup or kick it out. Or I'm going to do a step back where I take four steps, yeah. five steps. I'm just like, how is this not a travel? I've seen him double jump back. The first jump is already a travel. You establish a pivot foot. You jump off of that pivot foot and land backwards and then do it again and then get pissed off if you don't get a foul call 30 seconds later. Fuck off, man. (laughs) We're already giving you a liberty that I think is ridiculous as a fan. It's a Euro step. It's a Euro step. It's not a Euro step. (laughs) On a jump shot, that doesn't exist. You don't have momentum. You haven't picked the ball up in a a bullshit. Yeah. (laughs) But they were like... 
at times, uh, Cleveland fans like crying out that was a foul was just like you do that because you feel like your team is always put upon right, no matter right. what side you're on. Right. Other times you're like, I can't believe the refs are going to call it pro uh, warriors yeah. on one side. And yeah. then the same play happens and they don't call it again on the Cavs. Right. So if you're just, just be even. Yeah. Um, but I've been, it felt that way to me in game one that the refs were kind of in the pocket for the Warriors. Not that they took money. I'm not to any of that bullshit. It just felt like they were call, they were calling things on the war, on the Cavaliers that they weren't calling on the Warriors. And it was like LeBron, when he got hit on that shot, he was taking on that move. And then they called the foul on him when he stripped Le- Durant in the lane. And they called a foul near the end of the game. That was a block. He, that was well, right. That was well, I think no. by letter of the oh, law. That the, was a block. The stand, yeah, yeah. That foul, you can go either way on that. On foul. the call, yeah. Where they, go either the way. refs came in, I think they made technically the right call. But when's the last time you've seen that reversed in the finals? For fuck's sake, the finals probably never. That's what I'm saying. It's you let them play. If you call the foul and you call the charge, you don't go back there and go, well, what do we call, James? Let's take a look at this uh, video monitor. I've never seen that. I, I, I See, I take bigger offense to like, what was it, short time thereafter when George Hill committed a phantom foul? And he's like, dude, it's too late in the game oh, for this. absolutely. It's too late. Yeah. And when he was just looking at him dumbfounded, yeah. I, I, as a viewer at home, I was like, dude, I'm with you. Yeah. Like, technically, I'm pulling for Golden State, and this is only because I've got like – I would say six to eight friends in my Facebook and Twitter feed okay. that are Cleveland fans that act like uh, a New York or Boston fans, like Ooh. fans from there. So they have this same type of bravado, and they, they are like, oh, f-. like I, I, I saw numerous people literally say after game seven win against the Celtics, yeah. I've been saying it all season, we should have been starting Jeff Green. The fuck you have. <laughs> the fuck you have. I saw numerous people. Numerous. Nobody has said that <laughs> in the Cavs organization. That sentence has not been fucking uttered. Jeff Green doesn't even say no. He start every his game. father <laughs> didn't say that. His mother didn't. Say, oh, I'm sure his mother did. But if you watch basketball, the problem with Jeff Green is he'll give you that game seven, yeah. which that game seven was awesome. That that was. They, but he uh, had to give you that game seven. Yeah, a high water mark for Jeff Green right there. Yeah. But the problem is the next game. He's likely to give you three points, yep. a rebound, yep. and 12 minutes. And six fouls. Yes. Yeah. And you're like, that's Jeff Green. Or five fouls, right? Yeah. Occasionally he shows up and you're like, dude, this dude is great. When he shows up, he's great. When he's committed to the game, he's great. He's been fool's gold on like six teams now. Yeah. Celtics included. Yeah. Celtics and, and OKC. Yeah, OKC. And it just uh, numerous times over and over, you buy into the reality of Jeff Green. Like early yeah. on, was he Memphis drafted him or yeah, was Memphis. he with mm-hmm. early on? And you're like, man, this guy could be something. And then he yeah. goes somewhere else. And you're like, I still believe in Jeff Green. And just like, after a while, like, no, man. He's nothing but potential. He's empty calories. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's exactly. It feels he good is. while you're eating it. Yeah. But and you're like, oh, I'm, it later. exactly. This yeah. is nutritious. And after a while, you're like, no, man, it's just adding to my waistline. Exactly. Just, it's the gut of my salary cap, although they're not paying him too much. No, they're not. But they're paying him the right amount. I agree. I agree. And, and that's the thing that was uh, incredible to watch, Matt, in that game one. I, I, I thought. I really thought Golden State was going to come in and blow the doors off them. I Once the third quarter started, yes. you got that, that lead up, and you're like, here we go. This yep. is all I was waiting for. You guys can go up in the first half. Warriors are going to turn it on in the third, and they're yep. going to maintain that lead, and you're going to lose by 8 to 12. Right, because we've seen for the first time in a long time for a LeBron-led team, we've seen them give up leads in the second half in consistently through the playoffs, mm-hmm. and that happened this year many, Against many times. Against lesser teams. Against lesser teams. Yes, Indiana. Uh, not so much Toronto, but certainly Indiana and Boston. Oh, you kidding me? Toronto <sighs> it looks like the biggest loser of this playoffs. Yeah, I agree. Not even like you could say Portland if you wanted to. I guess. Sure. But, but it was always a, it was always a miracle that they were in a three seed. Exactly. West. And the Pelicans didn't make the finals. Right. Uh, and uh, they didn't get taken to seven games by their first-round opponent right. and their third-round opponent, <laughs> and your asses got swept. I I don't even know what the hell they do this summer. Yeah, I don't have the slightest clue because they need to split up that tandem now because that's clearly never going to do it. Yeah, DeRozan is the better option to move, I guess. But why sit him in the fourth quarter if he's so great? Oh, to move, yes. To move. I hear you, yeah. But well, Kyle Lowry is a knee injury away from being I done, know. and then you're out of nothing. I DeRozan's younger and has more potential. Yeah. 
But I think that makes him more movable because yeah. I don't think anybody wants to pay Lowry at his current salary. I, I don't know what the fuck they do. I think they just get a new coach and see what happens. We saw this with we Why saw because we saw this with Golden State man with Mark Jackson. They were constantly bumping against the ceiling. Switched him out. Steve Kerr takes him to two titles. That's possible. Maybe they, a third one. They too. had a wealth of talent that was much deeper. Than uh, uh, what Toronto, Toronto has, maybe. I mean, Toronto has a bunch of young, interesting they pieces. Do. They do, but are any of them at this point? Do you say that's a potential Curry, Thompson, Green? They don't have an Iguodala. No, they don't have. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like Van Vliet is is interesting. Yeah. He could be a somebody. Yeah. You know, they have those guys. You're like that could be a something. I don't right. know what you do with that. Right. Um, they feel like the Celtics to me with if Hayward and Irving had not gotten hurt. That's the. I think they have potential because there's the, there's a lot of young guys who stepped up this year, and they have potential. And they got smoked by LeBron and and the Cavaliers in that in that playoff series. But but I think that's a lot of Dwayne Casey's coaching. Casey, for whatever reason, he gets overwhelmed by Tyrone Lue and and LeBron's coaching. It's happened numerous times, mm-hmm. and he, he's shown in the playoffs that he cannot make adjustments in game. He's terrible at making adjustments in game. So you need to have a a, a coach who can. Uh, Understand what's happening in the rhythm of the game and then make those adjustments. Because players stop playing for you when you can't. Because they see the adjustments that yeah. they want to make and you don't see them. And they have to play what you tell them to play because you're the fucking coach. Hmm? You know? And so, or they take you out, as we saw with, Qu- K- with Casey sitting uh, DeRozan for that one game the entire fourth quarter. And so that's, so I think, but I don't know if there's a coach out there, Matt. That could step into the situation with Toronto and take them to the next level. I don't see that out there. I think it all comes down to where LeBron goes, if he stays or whatnot. But yeah. the Celtics and the Sixers, but the Celtics especially. Oh, yeah. If everybody can stay healthy, and my biggest fear on that is Kyrie. Yeah. That team is going to be – they're going to be bringing Jalen Brown off the bench. Off the bench. That's insane. Are you kidding me? You yeah. got Kyrie, Hayward, Tatum – Horford, and you need another yeah. slightly bigger guy, unless I guess you put Hor- or Hayward at the f- four, and then maybe you. T- I, I don't think. I think you bring Brown off the bench. Yeah. Uh, I think ha- that team's going to be sick. He's the, here's the ironic thing I don't think they even need Hayward. I think they, over, I think they overreacted, got Hayward. They went to the Eastern Conference Finals seven games. Without yes. Kyrie and without Could've. Hayward, they don't need Hayward. They, do. I, I would trade Hayward right fucking now if I was the Celtics. Hey, Kyrie's great. He's going to fit in nice. All those guys play well. We don't need Hayward. Let's t- cause, See, I think I'd trade Jalen Brown right now. Really? Over Hayward? Because I think you could get more in return for him than you could with Hayward. Yeah, Hayward's a better player, but because of the potential and the contract that Brown is on, and I'm talking to my ass. I haven't thought about this more than the two seconds. Maybe <laughs> no, I'm an idiot. A conversation, man. Yeah, because yeah. some some online could be like, "Oh no, that doesn't make sense because of X, Y, and Z." Like right. I don't know the full, but Hayward just signed that contract. Yeah, <sighs> maybe within the insurance provision and whatever they have, if he doesn't play X number of games, then the team the contract ends up you know is insured and they don't have to pay out as much and it's yeah. not that bad. And I don't have the fucking slightest clue about any of that. But what if it took like Hayward, I mean, not Hayward, but uh, uh, Brown, some of their first round picks, to, and then get somebody huge in return? Yeah, maybe. I think, about I think it. you get more with from Gordon though the potential of Hayward on your on your team from another team. You get more from them to get Hayward on their team. Uh, but I, think, I also think it would be rare for Boston to trade a white dude. <laughs> like I just, I mean, I'm going to be honest with you. They love their white guys in Boston. There's nothing wrong with that. They just do. So I think it'd be. I, AJ, no way he's going to trade Hayward. So it's probably, it, it probably could be Brown. But for me, looking at it from the outside, I would trade Hayward in a second to get a better package in and because the team does not, does not need him at all. He's surplus to, to, need, to, surplus to requirements or whatever. Yeah, but his was like it's a clean break. So yeah. as long as he can get the psychology of I'll still go back up for oops and all that, it'll right. take a while. Yeah. But if he can put that recklessness back into his mind – I'll take him over yeah. Jalen Brown because he's more consistent at a higher level. What do you think about Kyrie not being at Game 7? They said he had nasal surgery. Come on now. It's I, Game I 7, bro. I agree, but... Yeah. Okay, so what was your uh, guess as to the final of the finals? Yeah. Because this is coming out now after Game 3. So we yeah. might as well go ahead and put our predictions in. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I'm saying of like, what was your before the game one? Who did you pick and in how many games? Golden State in five. 
Okay. I had Cleveland winning one of the games in Cleveland, but it was going to be 4 1. Out of respect, I did the same thing, but I sweep is still on the, the yeah. table. I, here's, the, here's the thing after that game one, and it was an incredible game. Like, that's a great finals game. That was fun. Back and forth. It was awesome. No one was out of it, even though even when you thought they were out, it might be out of it. They weren't out of it. When 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 Golden State hit those two threes near the end of the game, uh in the middle of the fourth quarter, like a seven, six minute mark, I was like, this is done. This is fucking done. Then I gotta come back twelve on the Warriors. And god damn it, they did. Because the Warriors made stupid mistakes, overthrowing Durant on passes, throwing the ball out of bounds, missing well, they easy only had, shots. They only had seven turnovers. Yeah. That's it. Even with seven turnovers, but yeah. But they, st- but somehow the Cleveland stayed in that game. Cleveland stayed in it because of offensive rebounding. Yeah, because yeah. they shot twenty seven percent from three. <sighs> Golden State only shot like thirty six, so it's not yeah. like it's that much better. But at the same time, nine percentage points when um, they hoisted up Cleveland did. I don't, I don't even know. Yeah, upper twenties, low thirties, something like that. If Jr. could hit a three, God, they'd be in Shh, great place. If Jr. Place. could remember what the score is, yeah. Well, let's let's yeah let's let's. This is the thing. Coming out of game one, I feel like Cleveland figured something out. So if if they can survive the JR situation, which is a death blow to most teams mentally, that's a Nick Anderson situation where he doesn't make those free throws and they get swept out by Houston. Because Orlando was giving Houston a hell of a first game and could have stole that first game from Houston. You know what's funny? I'm just going to interject real quick and let you get back on point. Someone posted on... uh on Reddit, a picture of the New York Post where this exact same thing had happened to J.R. Smith once on the Knicks, where Mello is standing there and he's like clenching both fists <laughs> and looking down. And it's two separate shots that they superimpose, oh, not into one, but right. it's like two photographs and one is over top of the other. And J.R. was like, I thought we were ahead. I'll find it and I'll, se- I'll send it to you. And it's just like, mm. the thing is, I, I feel, I feel, I do not feel bad for LeBron. Saying you got to be better and all that stuff because yeah. you muscled the Cavs to pay Jr. This is part of the problem of having championing a, a teammate like Jr. And I got nothing against Jr. Yeah, but he's never been known for his basketball IQ, right? Or his his acumen when it comes to that type of yeah. He is a full confidence. I will shoot at all times and maybe pull off an amazing dunk from an alley oop or something, right? But that's what I do and. To, get caught talking about laying pipe with girls on Instagram. <laughs> yes. But, and I, you know, you can make correlations if LeBron is to Jordan, like Rodman is to Jr. And Rodman was sure. a way better player. Rodman knew what, when to handle business. Rodman was a smart fucking player. Yeah, he as was outlandish as he was. Cuckoo. Yeah. But he was smart fucking player. Yeah. But on the court, he knew what his job was and he knew exactly. how to execute it to a degree that you could tell he was, that's a place in life where he was happy. Exactly. He's dialed in 100%. Yeah. Whereas JR, there's an, uh, there's, he, JR has that uh, uh, confidence with no reputation to back that up. Yeah. He's as consist- inconsistent as Jeff Green in different ways. Yeah. He's just as inconsistent. And so when he dribbled the ball, man, I, I, I couldn't believe what I was watching. This, is, and this isn't a rookie. I understood George Hill missing the second free throw. I, that's, a, that's an overwhelming moment. Game one of the finals, you were just on Sacramento or Utah where you had no yeah. – you weren't going to the finals in, on any of those teams. And here you are in game one of the finals. You got this foul. Clay Thompson's pissed. There's 3.6 seconds left in the game. You hit that first one. It was a sweet free throw. You nailed it. Swish. That second one, you alligator armed that fucker. You were trying to guide that ball in there. So I accept it. I was like, yeah, I get it. It happens. It happens, and you're nervous. I fucking get it. And it, the reason JR was able to get that rebound was because it came off the front of the rim. So everything worked out for the Cavaliers to at least go up by one with a layup because Kevin Durant was underneath the rim and he was expecting the ball to come bounce off the back of the rim or back of the backboard and take it or the front of the backboard and take it. And so JR was in a position when he got that rebound to spin around Durant with almost no resistance and go up for a layup and would have maybe gotten the foul. Even. There's a great picture I saw where right when he runs it out and he's crossing, oh. crossing the threshold of the three-point line, yeah. LeBron is at the top of the key. There's two point something seconds yep. left, and the closest defender is 13 feet away. They yes. measured it, and they superimposed, and he's roughly at 27 feet, and the defender is just below the charity stripe at 14 feet. And you're like, you got all the daylight in the world right there to LeBron. Right, he right. dribbled it out an extra three, four steps and then turned and threw yep. it back into George Hill. 
Uh, he, he's an asshole, and I, in my opinion, and I, and I think Le, uh, I would sit him for the rest of the finals. I would never play him again. Jr. Yes, he brings you nothing. He brings you nothing. He brings you a confidence sometimes when you need. He's a good front runner with confidence. Yeah. yeah okay. Fine. If you, he is. Then put him in when you establish twenty points. Well, just like fine. if he can feel the momentum and you're up by two, he'll put you up by five, and then potentially put you up by eight. Do you think just he's be- our test? Do you think he's like our test? Uh, no, I just think that every once again, he will, he can kind of rise the, the rising tide will lift him mm. as well and he'll help push it. Okay. So he can get you six, six, eight points real quick. Cause he'll just hit three straight shots and he'll start doing those little <laughs> three point. I love that. That's one of my favorite three point celebrations. Uh, but then he'll give you nothing yeah. for a while. Yeah. Just nothing. That's what frustrates me because. He tried to throw, and the reason I say is not, he's not an asshole for what he did last night. That it, mistakes happen. That's what happened. But him trying to throw LeBron under the bus in the post game interview. First, he lied that he thought he. Oh, I was dribbling out to get a better shot. You were lying, son of a bitch. Yeah, you, trying you, to cover up. You thought you were ahead, and you made a bonehead. Yeah, move. Yeah, you can read his lips. Just admit it. You can read his lips. But, I found a clip of him where he just said, "I thought we were up." Yeah, I thought we were up. You could see they superimposed, but. Then when they asked him, he said, well, I looked at LeBron and I, I thought he was going to call a timeout. You motherfucker. Like, you're going to throw the guy who has given you a fucking ring and has brought you the finals and brought you onto the team and so made you make money? Got you a huge contract. Yes, and you're going to sit there and throw him under the bus because your stupid ass can't admit that you were dumb enough not to understand what was happening in the moment? Fuck you. Man, if I was LeBron, oh my God, I would kick the shit out of this guy if I was LeBron for what for saying that shit alone. So it's just incredible to me that people want to bash LeBron about this or that. I think we should be done with that and retire that once and for all. That guy has shown, like you said at the beginning he sh- of our, this podcast, he he shirked uh, the moment at he times. He shrunk from the moment. Shrunk from the moment. He was overwhelmed by it at times. He steps up all the time now. And uh, you know, I'll even you can throw that uh, cramps game in, in San Antonio. I totally believe that he was like, I can't keep giving everything I got. This team is dead. This Heat team is dead, man. Oh, that was yeah, but that was like game two. Yeah, and that but like you looking at that, and you're like, people wanted to say, oh, that's old LeBron coming back, uh, overwhelmed by the moment. Bullshit. The man gives everything he's got in these games, and he he must fifty one points, man. Oh yeah, on the outside of he had five turnovers. Yeah, but I, if they can control, I mean, they had nineteen, I believe, offensive rebounds to Golden State's four, and that's the tail of the tape as to yeah. why they're still in this because. They shot worse. They turned the ball over more. Yeah. Not by much. I think they had 11 turnovers to Golden State, seven. Mm-hmm. So it's not a huge difference, but they're losing those little battles. Yeah. That coupled with Curry had a good game. Durant had a bad one. But you need one of those two, if not both of them, to have a bad game for you to have a shot. Mm-hmm. So you lost a W. I mean, a huge W, yeah. too. And I, I honestly think you could chalk a percentage of it up to the refs, but also to... The bigger problem was just the lapse of of judgment in the moment of certain players. Yeah, sure, and 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 certain players not stepping up. Kevin Love played well, but Tristan Thompson had two points and five rebounds, whereas Larry Nance had like nine, I think nine points and seven. He was a spark plug. Nance is the one you start. I think Thompson. I get why you wanted to carry him over from uh, from the I Boston think series. I, I still think I take you Thompson. would. Oh, fuck. I, although I'm more sold on why uh, I. I, I think know. starting Corver get... over Jr. makes more sense to me, but I don't think Corver can give you a full game is the problem. Yeah. But, he fuck, just... I don't mind that, that dude shooting at any point. Yeah. Just like you trust because he's put in so many hours yeah, working yeah. on it. Yeah. And they have a rhythm with him when he's in motion. And yeah. when him and Love and LeBron are all vibing, it's a great fucking game to watch. There's a conversation. We'll know by the time we hear this. Yeah. They will. But as to whether or not Love gets suspended a game because he left the bench on the altercation. Oh, jeez. And he wasn't in the game. I hope they don't because it yeah. seems dumb to do it. I agree. But by letter of the law, he should get a game suspension. I wonder if Thompson will be suspended for the for game I two because of that because throwing the ball in green He pushed space. it into his face and... It was dumb. Maybe give him a technical after yeah. the fact and just like don't do this because it'll add up after a while. Right. But yeah, I don't think so. Do you think they'll bounce back? Do you think now now after this game one, because you asked me like when the first series started, what was my feel? What, I, after this game the one? The cop out answer is it all comes down to game two. Okay. I don't think they b- bounce back to win this fucking series. Okay. I never thought. Just like you, I, I was like five. Yeah. Out of respect to LeBron. But did anything happen in game one that made you think the Cavaliers might have figured something about? Because I, I think they're weak. The Warriors are weak inside. 
And I think you can you can run a layup drill on the Warriors because they do not have – even Draymond isn't – Draymond needs a second person in there to, to defend on, inside, and I don't think he's got it. And the fact that they got 19 offensive rebounds like that, the fact that Houston, if they had stopped fucking shooting threes and run a layup drill, they'd have won game seven on the Warriors. I think that's where you bit them and hit, hit them. And I wonder if LeBron and Tyrone Lue, but really LeBron, figured out that this is how you beat – the Warriors. I wonder if he was watching these games against Houston and seeing where the holes are because LeBron's got an incredible basketball IQ and maybe he figured something out and if anybody who's been through adversity and had the whole world turn on him and make fun of him knows what to say to JR and turn that team around, Hopefully. it could be LeBron. And yeah. if they win game two, then I think they have an excellent shot to win this series. If, if Curry can't figure out how to make adjustments with the team, because the Warriors themselves have been lucky a lot this year. And I, just, I just think mentally they haven't been up, not up for it, but they're just kind of tired. Yeah. It's been a long time. So I still think the Warriors are going to win. What they do in the offseason will be interesting, but because uh, I don't yeah. know if you can financially afford to even keep this team together because yeah. KD and I believe Clay are up for a contract. So Clay said he's willing to take less. Right. But. They'll be interesting, but we'll see. By the time you hear this, yeah, um, I won't get to see game two, but I'll watch you game won't. three. Oh, no, so I, much... I already committed to uh, – my wife asked me like a couple weeks ago, <sighs> hey, on this date, you want to do this? And it's something I knew she would like. I yeah. have no zero interest in it. <laughs> but I know she's looking forward to it. So I'm like, of course, let's of course. go do it. Yeah. If that's what you want to do, sure. I love you. We got to yeah. go do this. And then I saw the schedule and I was like, nothing I can do. Yeah. I'm not even going to remotely bring it up. Right. Hopefully, Hopefully I – I hope she realizes during the day and be like, oh, you didn't even bring that up. Like, right. kind of like a nod to me because I've watched a bunch of these games and she knows it. Yeah. This is the only sport that I do this with where I'm just like, I'm watching as many, if not all of these as I possibly can. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, all yeah, right. hopefully we'll, we'll see where game, I, you know, I would love it to go a bunch of games, but I, there's no way it's going to go seven. Yeah. You don't think so? No. Uh, cut two. I, yeah, cut to, <laughs> but I just don't see Cleveland being able to string enough good games together. Yeah, overall like that because you got Jordan Clarkson on your team. You got yeah, you got too many guys where I'm just like I don't trust them. Yeah, uh, so and and veterans that might be nearing the end of their time. So yeah, yeah, how much can you rely? And on And guys that? that like yeah, Kevin Love put up whatever fourteen and twelve was yeah. in game one. I'm not sure. I have to look it up, but. You need him to do 25 yeah. 16 or something. At least to match what you're going to get from Thompson or from uh, uh, yeah. Curry or anything like you that. You need yeah. to have him be a second fiddle, yep. legit second fiddle, as opposed to, well, Lord, uh, you know, hopefully some one of these guys steps up and is my wingman tonight. The, the irony, wouldn't that be the irony that J.R. Smith comes out and has the game of his life? That would be the irony as hell, man. That, that'd be fun. as hell. Yeah. I would like that for J.R. Yeah, it would bounce it out. Uh Okay. Well, All right. That's the end of the first discussion that we had, Matt and I, about uh, the NBA Finals. Uh, and now we're going to go into, like I said at the beginning of this podcast, we're going to go into the second part, which is uh, Matt and I talking about um, uh, what went through, what we, uh, you know, what we thought about, uh, what we're thinking now, what's going to happen with the Cavaliers, what's going to happen with LeBron James, what's going to happen in the series, and who's gonna, if we think it's going to be a sweep or not. So, all right. So just uh, keep listening, and I uh, hope you're enjoying it so far. All right, now we're back. Uh, we talk, You guys heard the first half hour of the show. Matt Nost talking. We were talking right after game one. Now we're after game three. What was on the first half hour? What? What did I? What have I? What have I missed by participating in the second half hour? <laughs> you, you missed. Well, you talked in the first half hour after game one. We were talking after game one of what we thought was oh, going to happen. You, you're turning this into a two part. Yes, it's a two part or a one show move. Yeah. So Matt mentioned how this is funny. We were recording the podcast after only one game has happened. Now two games have happened. Uh, Cleveland's down three. Three games have happened. Well, th- right, but after that one game had happened. I mean, two yeah, games oh, happened I see since the recording. Now. Yeah. So w- we're now at three zero. Uh, Durant pretty much uh, put the nail in the coffin last night, and I think that th- it's done. We're looking at this now. Do you think Cleveland has any shot at winning the next game? And do you ca- like? It doesn't even fucking matter. Um, I mean, it matters for pride's sake, for Christ's sakes. I guess. I hope that LeBron's not at the the. Even like you know what I don't want to see from him. What's that? Dial it in, phone it in, phone it in the way Kobe did. In that uh, what oh, year was yeah. that? Where the final game against the Seas? Yep, they just got smoked, yep. and you could tell he wasn't tuned in anymore. Nope. His heart wasn't in it at all. Yeah, he was just he resigned himself to the fact that they lost the series. Now they're going to lose the game by this much. Yep, 
and the Celtics were not going to take their foot off, the, you know, the the collective Lakers' throat. Yep. And as much as Kobe is still a killer, that to me is, you know what, man, you're building up a mystique one way, and to do that means I'm not sure I buy. It. You can be defeated. Yeah. You can be defeated. Right. Like your mind can be broken, and you're not Jordan to me in that case because right. he was he was he was easily trying. That was his his bald faced intention was to eclipse Jordan. Right. And there's nothing wrong with that motivation. If you want to be the best, you got to beat the best. Right. Uh, and I can't fault him for it. And that's just where he faltered for me. I was like, I don't think I've ever seen Jordan mentally give up like that. Yeah. Even when he knew he was going to leave. Hell lose. no, man. Jordan. And I hope LeBron doesn't. Dead. Even if they're going to lose, man, I hope tomorrow night he goes down with 55. 14 and 12, yeah. just something ridiculous. Shoots like 68% from the field right. and shoots nothing but shit from within three feet and three pointers yeah. and shoots that well. Shoots still like 46%, like puts up a pantheon level. That's what I hope from LeBron. Yeah. And unfortunately, then he needs three other guys to step up and put up their A minus games. Yeah. yeah. At least three others to win a game. Yeah. That's tough. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I, I'm in a place where. However this thing goes down, I'm already focusing on what he's going to do next year. Is he going to stay? Is he going to go to L.A. where there's rumors the Lakers? Or is he going to go to Houston, San Antonio, Philadelphia? Even Boston has been talked about, which I don't think could ever happen because they'd have to reunite with Kyrie. See, I think Philly makes... Do you think Philly makes the most sense? That's the one that... I, L.A. doesn't make sense to me. Yeah. Why? Yeah. Because t- to make it happen, you, you'd have to get rid of some of your young, guy, your young guys anyway, right? Who would be the ones like kind of... Uh, being able to spell you as you're getting older, and Paul George is supposed to come with, but who's your point guard? So, is is like is Ball your point guard? Are you going to deal with that dude's dad and all that other yeah, shit? Yeah, where does Ingram slot to? Right, Brandon Ingram. Right, exactly. Um, and do you want to be coached by Will by fucking Luke Walton at the end of your career? See, I don't think that matters as much. Uh, okay, I, I think Walton is a you know a decent enough coach. Sure, especially if you look, he's proven with the Warriors. You give him enough talent. He knows how to coach a team. Look, the system was in place. Right. But he's also controlling substitution patterns, timeouts, uh, when to give his guys a pep talk, when to not. Like, right. the you know, Kerr has it. And he was entirely uh, aping that style. It's not like he was making uh, detours. Right, right, He was right. doing everything he did before, but there's, that's still a lot of balls to juggle. It's yeah. egos to manage and knowing when to talk to guys and when to let them go and right. how your relationship with them is different than Kerr's. And you can't just be Kerr. Yeah. You have to be yourself. Like that takes a complexity and an understanding, and still managed to do that. Rattled off a longer win streak than Kerr ever did. Yeah, true, very so true. I, I, I don't. You know, Walden could be done if you get LeBron. LeBron is your coach. Yeah, that's true. So, and Walden is, would be fine with that, right? Just like Lou is. Do you think Houston is the right? Do you think he's uh, like? I don't see him joining Houston. Yeah, you don't think it's 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 overkill to have Harden. How do you have three guys who are ball dominant? Yeah. Share the ball. Well, that's what I feel like. I feel like LeBron sets up to extend his career by not being the guy who brings the ball up the court. He sets up the picks, sets in down low, pops out for the shots. It will add life to his career, years to his career to be that guy instead of the dude who has to dribble the ball up and control the offense and everything. Well, he can't do 48 in a game. That's what I'm saying. So he can't. going to Houston, it makes sense for me with Capella and Chris Paul and, and Harden and Ariza out on the wing. You've got yourself a good setup there. But then you're also saying, I'm not the alpha dog anymore. Like, you're, you're I don't full think, on saying that. I don't think he's I, he's two years away, three years away from, from that. From that. Yeah, okay. Talk to me in a year where he doesn't make the East. You know, to make the, the finals, finals from the East. Yeah. The, after, the year after that, maybe. Yeah. But if next year, say he joins Boston or Philly right. or somebody in the East and they make it again, well, he still gets to be alpha in the East. <laughs> I guess so. Yeah, he does. Point. You can't take it away from him. That's nine years in a row at that yeah. point. If he goes to the West and makes it to the finals, now I'm impressed. Right. Because you beat it. Like, here, here's, here's my problem. I think I said this on another one. Maybe it was part one. Yeah, part one. <laughs> or some, I don't know, because I don't know if we got into a LeBron discussion. But It's all a blur. Who are the Hall of Famers that he has beaten in this eight years? Tim Duncan. No, 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 in the East. I'm sorry. I didn't clarify. Oh, oh in the East. To, to say that it's so impressive that he's made it all these years. You could, uh, Pierce and Garnett. Sure. But they were— Dwayne the, Wade. Didn't he beat the Heat? Uh, when Wade was Wade? No. Okay. He joined Wade when Wade was Wade okay. at that point. Okay. Uh, Shh. 
Because he had to beat Detroit to make it that one year. I so would have said Dwight Wade. Howard, but Dwight Howard is he, not. I don't know if he's a Hall of Famer. Right, he probably exactly. is because of the number of All Star appearances. Like he isn't, though. I feel like he isn't. I, I bet you he sneaks in because centers. He was a huge center. Yeah, I guess. He almost won the MVP one year. Yeah, I guess. He has the longevity. I don't know. It's possible. Hmm. I'm, not, I'm not saying he is, but no, it's, it's decently possible. It's a legitimate question. Who? Who? In his last eight Paul years. Paul George? Yeah, he's beating Paul George. John Wall? I don't know if John Wall's a Hall exactly. of Famer. Exactly. Yeah, I don't know if he's got Kyle Lowry? Famers. Yeah. Not a Hall of Famer. Or DeRozan. Like, DeRozan? Like, you, not a Hall of Famer. You could Giannis, technically. maybe in eight years, like, he's like, oh, yeah, that dude's a for sure Hall of Famer. Oh, onto, uh, yeah, onto Compo. But yeah. he's, that's too early to tell. Yeah, exactly. And, and Bede and, and Simmons, who knows? Yeah. Right. It's like, you don't know. Yeah. It's a good question. Who? What Hall of Famer is he I guess, yeah, not many. In the the East, East isn't weak. Yeah. But that's why I would go to the West. Because then you're like, look. If I'm the best basketball player in the world, supposedly, yeah, I'm going to go to a situation where, where I can shut all my critics up, and I go through the toughest conference, and I still end up in the finals. With my, I will my team into the finals in the West. Yes. Then at that point, everybody can shut up. Yes. Right. And and you're you're just into the conversation. Except I don't know why he would do that. I, I, pride. What you just said, pride, the desire to prove something. Stay I mean, in the East and make the finals again. Yeah, but it's plastic. Ch- it's paper champion shit, man. It, you're not gonna, you can't feel good about coming out of the East when the East is shit. <sighs> That's just, what I mean. I just don't see him going to the Warriors and being willing to relinquish being chess master. The Warriors or the Rockets? Uh, the Rockets, I'm yeah. sorry. The Rockets and relinquish. Ooh, it, the he's not. Warriors. Uh, oh. No, the Warriors. That still didn't. When they were talking about that midseason. Yeah. What if? It'll never happen in a million years. Clay Thompson. It'll never happen in a million years. Yeah. Um, I just don't see him giving that up for another like two years. Yeah, unless next year is disastrous. But if next year is ninety percent of this year, why wouldn't he do it again the year after? You got to find a point guard, man. You can't do this with yeah. George Hill and and, no. and uh, 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 Rodney Hood. That, that I, ain't I gonna take you does. nowhere. Because Boston and Philly are both better than you next year. Yep, yeah. yep, both of them. Both are seasoned. You can take Philly, but if Boston manages to be at full strength, yeah. you cannot beat them. Nope. You can't. It took you seven games Take, to beat their Seven B-team. games to beat a rookie. To beat their the B-team. Who was the best Celtic on the floor in a game seven? Yeah. A rookie. <laughs> and it took you seven games. Seven games? Seven game. games. That shows you how weak that team is. That's why I thought that first game was essential for them to win. Because they could have ridden that high out of the Celtics game. They could have been... Uh, they could have because what they did so well in 2015 when they lost to the Warriors the first time was they dragged the Warriors into the pit. They slowed everything down. They put them in mud, and they knew exactly but, how to slow the game down and hit the shots. But they didn't have Durant. Durant is the X factor the in this whole fucking team. The only works they have to muck up are Curry's. Yeah. Now you have to make your choice as a Curry or Durant. Right. And then surrounding and them then t- are all the amazing weapons that Curry already had. Yeah. So Thompson, it's, Green. Yeah. Curry was, you know, the front runner for Finals MVP after the first two games. Yeah. Now I think it's neck and neck between him and Durant after Durant's flawless performance in games yeah. two and three, but yeah. he was dead in the first game. Uh, what was it last year? What was the 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 count last year? Was it four one, four two? What was it last 4-1. year? Four one. Four one. So it's, it might be the same count again. It was four one, was it not? <sighs> it's frustrating. I know. Dude, it's the old days. Plus, I think we're both tired today. Well, no, it's frustrating that this is happening again, Matt. I, I, I know the, the, the games or whatever is, is, you know, what is what is. But, like, to me, it's frustrating that it's happening. I, I really hope they would. I was hoping they would put up a better fight. And uh, I really thought when they went up yeah. 10, 12. In, 4 1. Okay. It went up 10 or 12 points last night. I thought for sure they're going to hold them off. They're going to keep hitting the shots. They're going to ride the wave of the crowd. And then slowly but surely, the Warriors just clawed back in. Some dumb plays by the Cavaliers down low, and they, and love missing some easy shots down there. Other people missing easy shots down there, let, not boxing out, letting rebounds go, letting JaVel McGee ride, ride through the fucking lane untouched. All that kind of stuff just drove me insane, man, because I get that they can only switch so much, but if the scrubs are beating you, then you're really not focusing on defense. If JaVel McGee is coming off the bench to score 12 points on 6-6 shooting, you're not playing good defense, man. Uh, I mean, they were... In the bottom percentile for yeah, I know. defense for I the know. entire season. Well, and yeah. in the playoffs, they amped it up, and they were yeah. playing good defense again like they did in years past. But LeBron has to play 48 minutes now, yeah. and he's only going to play strong defense for spurts. Yeah, And it's usually like on chase down blocks and stuff like that. Yeah. But there are numerous times where he's deciding to save his energy, and a jump shot goes up, and he just lets it. But it's somebody that's three, yeah. four feet away, and yeah, it's a yeah. missed switch. Yeah. 
And maybe it's his fault. Maybe it's somebody else's fault. And intuitively, I guess he just knows I can't waste the energy on that because I'm going to need it for somewhere else later. Right, right. I genuinely believe like he can make that calculus. He's one of the few players I would ever let do that. Yeah. Well, and it's a, it's a fascinating thing to watch because I read this great article on, in The Ringer. I can't remember which other, one of their basketball writers wrote it, but it was fantastic how they were basically saying the Cavaliers were trying to adopt the Houston Rockets' defensive schemes uh, for this series, and you can't do that on the fly. Like It takes so much practice and energy to be able to understand how to make these switches to throw off the Warriors and to be able to consistently maintain the switches. It took, so it takes a certain level of discipline yeah. that that team just does not yeah. have. Doesn't Houston have also has much them. better defenders. Yes, they do. It's Longer defenders. Yeah. You know, yeah, exactly. Who are more athletic and yep. more defensively skilled and yep. uh, do it all the time, so it comes second nature a little bit more. Yeah. You know, they don't have as many. Uh, Cleveland's got a lot of Ryan Andersons. Yeah, yeah, exactly. They do. Like Corver's not that great a no, defender. No. J.R. Smith, not that great a defender. Yeah, and Nance is exposed a little bit this whole playoff run as well. He, yeah. He's been occasionally good, but most of the time he's out of place, out of rhythm. He doesn't have that spark or that desire you'd yeah. want from a young they player. They got numerous guys like that. Like yeah. Hood just had his first offensively decent game. Yeah. After pitching a fit, you know, a round or two ago, when right. I wanted to come off the bench. Right. But I don't know what else he'd given you other than 13 points. Like Jordan Clarkson has been the yeah. worst version of like Lou Williams. Yeah. Just shoot it every time. You got confidence for days and it's off the front of the rim. Yeah. Like you got no legs and you're only playing six minutes. That's what, Clark, that's what uh, um, Jalen Rose said on the Simmons podcast yesterday. He said Clarkson is playing like he doesn't know they keep score. Ah, good way I to was put like, it. damn, I've never heard that analogy good way to before. Put it. Yeah, you watch it, like I, yeah. there was a sequence and I want to say it was game two where he took. I, ill-advised but not terrible shot in the lane. Yeah. They got the offensive rebound and kicked it back out to him, and he's already past the three-point line, just past the threshold, though, without skipping a beat, just instantly threw up the three, and that went off the front of the rim. That yeah. was what I was thinking of when I yeah, said yeah, that before. Yeah, yeah. And it was like, man, you followed up a bad shot by an even clunkier shot because yeah. <laughs> you didn't set up properly for that, and it was lazy, and you, yeah. you, know, you practically lasered it at the fucking rim. Yeah. It's, they, don't, they don't mind you shooting if you're going to take a quality shot. Yeah. That was just lazy as shit. Well, let me ask you something as as we because uh, I know we have to wrap things up here in the next few minutes, but I want to ask you your own personal experience with this because uh, uh, if LeBron does leave Cleveland, uh, it'll be of his own volition. Yeah. Um, what was your memory of when Kraus didn't want to bring everybody back and Jordan retired? Kind of at a protest. Was it how much did you have? How old were you? When, like, I'm sorry, I don't want to. Know, what was your anger level like? Were you cognizant of what was happening? Were you aware to understand oh, the yeah, machinations? No. I was what 17, 18 okay. when that happened. So you understood what Kraus was doing. You understood what Jordan was doing. You understood the people being entrenched on yeah, both sides. I and also why. knew Kraus was legendarily a miser. Yeah, that dude does not want to spend money unless it's attached to uh, the Chicago White Sox. <laughs> yeah. Owns or a the string Bulls. so you can pull it back out of your pocket. Yeah. yeah, owns the Bulls just to fund. Oh, the White Sox. The White Sox. Wow. Le- legitimately. See, I didn't know that. Spends more on the White Sox. Um, yeah, so when when that happens, yeah. just like, okay, yeah, they saw this coming a million miles away. Um, was there anger? Was there frustration? Was there even, for lack of a better word, maybe depression about this? Because, like, Jordan had been you guys' lifeblood for years to have him step away. I just knew it was coming. Oh, so you, you knew it was inevitable. Yeah, because uh, And the it wasn't Bulls, a culture shock at all? Because like, it just well, I guess completely was over. Perhaps perhaps it's more so a case of now I just know that of the, about the Bulls because we always run out supreme talent. Oh, interesting. But it's been happening since the Jordan era. But eventually we get, you know, we just, we're not willing to pay you. We'll replace you. Right. And we've done it pretty steadily. Right. Um, the first one I remember was Horace Grant. Yeah, when he wanted some money, which is weren't after three championships, weren't willing to resign. Yeah, uh, but there, God, I want to say that there was one before that as well. But I, I kind of already knew that as a story about Kraus that he was yeah. like this cheap dude, and there, it was a known thing in Chicago and whatnot yeah. and in NBA circles that my team doesn't matter how much money they have, does not like to spend. It's like the the the. Uh, there's a scouting combine in Italy right now. Yeah. And the Bulls are the only team that didn't go. Wow. And supposedly it's because it costs $10,000 to do. 
and the team didn't want to do it because it cost ten thousand dollars. <laughs> Now, Yikes. it's a story because the Bulls are historically known for not wanting to spend a penny if they don't have to. Right. And Paxson, GM, was like, no, our international scout told us that the level of competition that's going to be there isn't worth our time. <laughs> so we're focused on the draft that's happening in a couple weeks. Okay. It's $10,000. Yeah, I mean. And you already have scouts in Europe. Right, <laughs> <laughs> so this is really only ten thousand dollars that kind of goes to a charity yeah. and gives back to some something something yeah. tied in with the NBA and it's them giving back in Europe or potentially <laughs> Africa somewhere. Right, the right. proceeds go to pay for the or the event itself, and <laughs> in excess of that, nobody's making money. It's all going to a charity. Uh, I'm sure you could Kickstarter ten thousand dollars from the fans. Fuck yes, you could. <laughs> the Bulls sell out more often than any other yeah. franchise. People for, love the Bulls in yes. Chicago, man. Love them. Uh, so I'm not. Yeah. I, it do, but it could be the callous of not wanting to pay Jordan, even though he was worth as much money as he could command yeah, in the open market. I, I always think it's one of the greatest tragedies that he didn't just play it out. Like, they didn't let him just play it out. And if it sank, it sank. Because as terrible as the Kobe thing was for the Lakers, you, you like a lot of Lakers fans understood because they were like, fuck it. Like, to keep him on the team, it's worth it because – We'll just go see him in the twilight of of his career. Yeah, still get to see Kobe Jack we twenty shots. Yeah, exactly because we loved him. I think uh, Jordan would have willed that team back to another championship for one more year, at least one more year, because that guy, legendary competitor, he would have will at least to be in the finals. Yeah, right. What we see LeBron doing every year now for the last eight years, he ha- he would have willed that team into the finals. That's the thing, time. man. All those guys say that like hanging out with Kobe at the Olympics is what gave them a drive because yeah. they'd, they'd see him at breakfast and he's like, "I've already put up four hours of shots. Yeah. You guys just got out of bed for breakfast." Yeah. I've, I've read accounts where like we knew it was on, and Kobe yeah. got that because he heard stories about Jordan. Yeah, I mean, you imagine how focused and dedicated he would be nonstop. Just oh man, yeah, yeah. Had that been allowed to happen, and just like, look, you can be a bull for life. He'd earn just like Nowitzki. Yeah. You get to be here for life. You get to do whatever you want. I always think it's a crime when owners fuck with fans like that. On somebody like that that is the face that gives your uh, franchise value to this day, the Bulls is still one of the the most profitable profitable properties within all of sportsdom because of Michael Jordan 20 years ago. Exactly. And you haven't sniffed a title since. No. And that tells you something. That is the undercut to the argument of Rose got hurt before he reached his true prime. Sure, sure. But... I don't. I don't who know. Knows? I don't know. Yeah, with LeBron in the East, because Rose knows? is not going to be a Hall of Famer. Right. The right. first MVP to never make the Hall of Fame. He'll be the first. That's insane. That sucks, man. Yeah. As a footnote on your career. Yeah. Uh, well, I didn't want to end a depressing note, so let's uh, let's wrap this up. Um, so we'll see what happens. Game four is tomorrow night, and we'll see. If Do you they... think it's going to be a sweep? <sighs> is... No, but I'm crazy because I think LeBron will win. I mean, and then look, they'll win in Golden State, and then they'll come back to Cleveland. If if this and then is, it'll go seven, if this is like Steph in Houston, maybe he has two bad games in a row, and KD doesn't give you. Yeah, he can't muster full throttle again and be. They had him last night. Lights out. They had that twice. They've him. had that team. You never have him. Uh, I guess you're right. Especially the third quarter, man. Yeah. If you can't, because a few times they've managed to like. Hey, they're halfway through the third, and they've sustained the first like knockout punch. Yeah, they're hanging, and then by the end of the third quarter, it'd be like, "That's a game." I don't give a, you know, I don't care how close it may appear. Yeah, you just already see signs of wear and tear on the Cavs, and be like, "They're slowing on the switches, and they keep getting kind of this thing yep. and yep. shit." You know, you start to see that it it takes the Cavs longer to get their two points than it does the Warriors. When you start to see that shift in the game, then you start to worry because the Warriors are preserving energy at that point. And the Cavaliers are expending too much because yeah. they're trying to find the gaps in the defense with all the different passes and the movement and all that kind of jazz. Then and so it takes a little bit of time to get to the ball, get the ball, in, and then they're taking like contested shots or taking tough, tough two pointers. Or they, they took way too many, in my opinion, they took way too many situationally stupid three pointers last night. I, I thought that's part of the game. Now I know that the Celtics and Rockets. I, that's what frustrates me. That's a lesson. Yeah, it is. Run the layup drill when you can run the layup drill. There's no need to be popping out for threes when it's a two-point game. It makes no sense to me. Yeah, but these are professionals, and yeah. they've practiced those shots so many times I that it's, you play the numbers. Yeah, it just it's still worth the watch. gamble. Yeah, because you're end. usually this good at it, and yeah, yeah. But once the moment increases, 
it's one of those things that if you've played basketball enough, everybody's heard or given the pep talk of, hey, you're not making them from outside right now. So move the ball around, yeah. cut inside, we'll get you closer to the basket. It builds your confidence back up, and yeah. then you go back outside. Yeah. Just like, well, let's build you back up. We know you can do it. Yeah. Or exactly. just like keep, keep shooting it. When you're open like that, that's a good shot. Exactly. We know it every time. Yeah. Just when everybody's doing it, and you're 0 for 27 like the Celtics were. <laughs> Yeah. But look, if the or Cavs the get a game where uh, Kevin Love hits six threes, yeah. which is possible, sure, and then Corver can manage like in the minutes that he plays and he shoots like sixty percent or fifty percent from three, yeah, they get enough threes up, they could steal a game. They I think steal tomorrow. I think they can win tomorrow night. I, but if they, you know, he's he, LeBron's brain is incredible. The problem is he's playing four guys on the other side whose brains are just as powerful in understanding the yeah. game and a coach that's way and better. the coach. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yes, exactly. So we'll see what happens. All right. Well, uh, that's it for this episode of Outlaw Nation. Uh, thanks, everybody, for being so patient. We haven't been on in uh, uh, quite some time. So uh, it was nice to have Matt on the show to talk about uh, the NBA and talk about the finals. I will start be more, being more consistent with the show. You guys know I've been just been crazy busy, so I appreciate you being patient. But we are back, and uh, we will talk to you next week. I want to thank Matt. Matt, where can the people find you, brother? As if they don't already know already, but I just want to tell them why not. Uh, you know what? <laughs> you can hunt for me. <laughs> Exactly. I'm going to be hard to get. That's right. Are there any people on the reservation that are not fans? Rokinopolis. <laughs> That's fine. You can find me. Come find him. Come find him. Uh, and uh, we will talk to you next week on Outlaw Nation.